Hi everyone, today I teach you about hypertension and the last videos we were learning about cardiac diseases as well as uh, some of the main topics that is most vital topics in the medical surgical nursing. Then uh, today move on with the hypertension. Then see about the definition of hypertension. Hypertension otherwise it is known as a silent killer. This is the most common otherwise it is an emerging disease or an emerging lifestyle disease among adults. You can see the definition. Hypertension is defined as the systolic blood pressure of 140 millimeter in mercury level or higher and the diastolic blood pressure more than 90 mm in mercury level which is based on average of two or more accurate blood pressure measurement which is taken one to four weeks apart by a healthcare provider. As it is says, naughtiness is not a single measurement of uh, high blood pressure. So when we, when we say the person is hypertension, otherwise the individual is hypertensive means the blood pressure supposed to be that is systolic blood pressure more than 140 mm in mercury level as well as the diastolic blood pressure is more than 90 mm in mercury level that is the average of two to two or more accurate blood pressure measurement which is supposed to be taken one to four weeks apart by a healthcare provider then only we diagnose the particular individual as a hypertensive let's see some of the terminologies that the first one is hypotension Hypotension is a blood pressure that is lower than 90 by 60 mm in mercury level. That is the systolic blood pressure less than 90 as also the diastolic blood pressure that is less than 60 mm in mercury level. Then we say it is a hypotension. Then what is systolic pressure and what is diastolic pressure? So the systolic pressure is that is the pressure at the height of the pressure pulse that is called systolic pressure. Ideally, the systolic pressure is supposed to be less than 120 millimeter in mercury level. And the lowest pressure is called the diastolic pressure is supposed to be less than 80 millimeter in mercury level. Okay, that is systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Next, see what is pulse pressure? Pulse pressure is defined as the difference between the systolic and diastolic blood pressure. So, the normal pulse pressure is 40 millimeter in mercury level that is for a healthy adult. So the difference between systolic and diastolic pressure is known as pulse pressure. This is a classification of blood pressure for adults. So when you see the classification, so first of all the when the person uh, we say it's a normal blood pressure in the sense the systolic BP is supposed to be less than 120 millimeter in mercury level. And the diastolic blood pressure supposed to be less than 80 millimeter in mercury level. Similarly, when a person has the systolic BP of 120 to 139 and the diastolic BP 80 to 89, then we say it is a pre-hypertension. Then, when the systolic BP is between 140 and 159 and the diastolic blood pressure is between 90 to 99, that is termed as stage 1 hypertension. And further, when the blood, systolic blood pressure is more than or equal to 160 and the diastolic is more than or equal to 100 millimeter in mercury level, then we diagnose as a stage 2 hypertension. This is for the classification of, that is a standard classification blood pressure for adult. Normal blood pressure, then if it is goes higher, that is pre-hypertension, then stage 1 hypertension and stage 2 hypertension. So, to, uh, always we know the principle, prevention is better than cure. So, that is why to prevent or delay the progression of hypertension, we are supposed to have a healthy lifestyle. So, though if the person has any unhealthy lifestyle practices, then we are supposed to more educate or the person is supposed to modify the lifestyle practices to a healthy one. Then types of hypertension. The hypertension mainly categorized into Primary hypertension and secondary hypertension. Primary hypertension, we usually know the terminology, what is primary and what is secondary. Primary in the sense, there is no any underlying reason for that. So, that is the primary hypertension is a, that is result from unidentified cause. 
Then secondary hypertension in the sense that is the hypertension or otherwise increased blood pressure result from kidney diseases, renal artery stenosis, hyperaldosteronism and sleep apnea in the sense secondary hypertension means because of any other pathological fact um, features otherwise any other pathological conditions that leads to hypertension that is what we say secondary hypertension. According to the incidence rate, around 90 to 95% of adult population live with the primary hypertension. Then what are the causes of secondary hypertension? The main causes are already said in the previous uh, this one slide that is renal artery stenosis and certain renal disorders and medications, hyperaldosteronism and Pregnancy is the uh, most common secondary uh, hypertension that is the causes or the etiological factors that leads to secondary hypertension. The risk factors of hypertension. These, these are the major risk factors that leads to hypertension like gender, uh, males and females. So uh, most often the males have the uh, late adult males have more risk for developing hypertension. Then high salt index that is something we say is a dietary habit that is dietary habit of taking uh, more salt then they also a risk factor for developing hypertension then overweight otherwise obesity similarly sedentary lifestyle family history alcohol intake ethnicity and advancing age these are the main risk factors for the hypertension Then what are the possible contributing factors? The possible contributing factors are smoking, stress and sleep apnea. Similarly, the risk of target organs because of hypertension. As the person has hypertension, which are the uh, vital organs are risk for getting affected. That is, uh, the person will be having chronic kidney disease. That is, hypertension leads to chronic kidney disease. That is, it will damage the uh, nephrons and further leads to chronic kidney disease. Then heart diseases, especially uh, myocardial infection, cardiomyopathy, uh, likewise cardiac arrest, whatever it may end up with. Then peripheral arterial disease, retinopathy, stroke or transient ischemic attack. These are the vital organs that are affected due to hypertension. The pathophysiology of hypertension. When we see the pathophysiology of hypertension, this happens in a four mechanisms. Normal blood pressure is maintained by four mechanisms. That is the normal pathological regulation of blood pressure. They are sympathetic nervous system activities, activities of vascular endothelium, activities of renal system and activities of endocrine system. This is a four main mechanisms which regulate blood pressure in an uh, individual. So we see one by one. First one is a sympathetic nervous system activity. When we see about the activation of sympathetic nervous system, that is usually when the blood pressure decreases, sympathetic nervous system activate, so which increase the heart rate and cardiac contraction. Because of increase in heart rate and cardiac contraction, that is a that leads to vasoconstriction in the peripheral arterioles and promote the release of renin from the kidney which leads to increasing systemic vascular resistance and increased cardiac output that leads to increase the arterial blood pressure. The equation you know blood pressure equal to cardiac output into systemic vascular resistance. This is the mechanism of sympathetic nervous system. Second is the activities of vascular endothelium. How it regulate blood pressure? So the vascular endothelium is a single cell layer that lines the blood vessels. It will produce vasoactive substance and growth factors like nitric acid and endothelin. These potent vasoconstrictors increase the blood pressure. The third mechanism is activities of re renal system. You can see one by one. First one is it controls sodium excretion as well as it uh, controls the extracellular fluid volume. Thereby it re regulates blood pressure. Second one is uh, the activation of uh, the mechanism in the renal system. That is renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. 
So here the renin converts angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. So angiotensin converting enzyme that is ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme which convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. So the immediate effect is vasoconstrictor increases systemic vascular resistance thereby it increases the blood pressure. The prolonged effect is it stimulates the adrenal cortex to secrete aldosterone and the, this will uh, absorb the sodium and the water. So there is a sodium and water retention thereby increase the fluid level as well as increase the blood pressure. And next is the renal medulla. In renal medulla, the prostaglandins, it will activate and it will regulate the vasodilator effect. The fourth mechanism is activities of endocrine system. When the angiotensin 2 is stimulated in the adrenal cortex, it secretes aldosterone. So, this aldosterone stimulates the kidney to retain sodium and water. Thereby, it increases the blood pressure and it increases the cardiac output. Then, what are the clinical manifestations of hypertension? When we see the clinical manifestation, usually it is asymptomatic other than the elevated blood pressure. The other clinical features include that is there will be a retinal changes and hemorrhages and other eye changes. Then, renal damage, especially increased blood urea, nitrogen and increased creatinine level then coronary artery disease with the myocardial infarction angina and left ventricular failure and stroke stroke otherwise transient ischemic attack or cva then assessment and diagnostic findings so first and foremost assessment method we use is history and physical examination on history, we uh, collect the subjective information about their uh, medical backgrounds and what are the factors behind that. And in the physical examination, we can rule out the exact features or the uh, signs and symptoms you can identify. Then the laboratory tests we use urine analysis, blood chemistry, cholesterol levels, creatine clearance examination, renin level, 24-hour urine protein assessments. Then electrocardiogram and echocardiogram. These are the common diagnostic tests as well as assessment we carry out to rule out hypertension. Next is the management. When you see the management, the main goal of management, that is main goal of management is to prevent complications and death through achieving and maintaining arterial blood pressure lower than 140 bar 90 millimeter in mercury level. The optimal management plan is inexpensive, simple causes least disruption in the patient life. This is what the uh, goal as well as the what is our primary action to may manage the blood pressure. So first of all, lifestyle modifications. In the lifestyle modification, the encourage the patient to adopt DASH diet. That is high in fruits, vegetables and low fat diary and reduce saturated fat. Second one, dietary sodium reduction that is supposed to reduce to 2.4 gram per day that is a record for the adults. Then control alcohol intake, physical activity that is brisk walking 30 minutes per day should be practiced and also the weight reduction that is body mass index should be between 18.5 to 24.9 kilogram per meter square. This is a lifestyle modification to maintain or regulate the blood pressure. Next is the medication therapy. Medication therapy includes first, first is the diuretic related drugs. That is uh, as you know that is antihypertensive therapies. In the antihypertensive therapies first one is diuretics. The diuretics drug of choices are thiazide diuretic drug of choices chlorothaladone, loop diuretics that is frozamide, potassium sparing diuretic example amylodrive, aldosterone receptor blockers that is pyrolactone. Then second one is a central alpha 2 agonist and other centrally acting drugs, reserpin and methyl dopa. Third is beta blockers. Beta blockers with intrinsic sympathomimetic activity. 
So, atinolol is the drug of choice. Other drugs like propanolol, beta log all comes under beta blocker. Next, alpha 1 blockers. Alpha blockers like prazosin and minipras. Then combined alpha and beta blockers. Then vasodilators we use. Then angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor that is ACE inhibitors. Calcium channel blockers. Drugs like non-dihydropyridine and dihydropyridines. And direct renin inhibitors are the medical management. Then nursing management. What is the role of nurse in managing hypertension or um, advise the patient to maintain the blood pressure? So first is assessment. In assessment we do assess the potential signs and symptoms of target organ damage like assess for angina otherwise that is chest pain. Then shortness of breath, altered speech or vision or altered balance, nasal bleed, headache, dizziness, balance problem and nocturia. Similarly, the cardiovascular assessment that is apical and peripheral pulses. Then next is the assess for the personal, social and financial factors that will influence the condition or its treatment. This is, comes under the nursing management that is assessment aspect. Next is the nursing interventions. Once we rule out the patient has the hypertension and what are the interventions we are supposed to take. First one is the encourage exercise. As it is already there, we said in the lifestyle practices that is lifestyle modification, encourage exercise that is the uh, advise the patient to do brisky walk for 30 minutes per day. Then support adherence to treatment that is uh, educate the patient to never stop taking medicines. The patient is supposed to uh, take medicines as prescribed. Increase diet modification that is that is already we said dash diet. Increase dietary modification and weight reduction. Advice to control alcohol intake and tobacco that is smoking and alcohol intake it is a major risk factor that is develops hypertension. Then promoting home and community based care which includes teach patient about the importance of using calibrated manometer that is manometer or is pycno manometer is the device we use to measure blood pressure. So educate the patient regarding the use the calibrated manometer. Teach about meaning of each number in blood pressure reading and reading of BP measurement should be documented. So educate them how to manage blood pressure in the uh, at a home level. Here we see the complications of hypertension. If the patient could not manage or maintain the normal blood pressure, what are the uh, adverse effects that are always adverse events will happen in the patient body. First of all, cerebrovascular accident. That is, otherwise we say brain attack, stroke, then retinopathy, which will affect the vision. Then renal failure, it affects the kidney as well as it affects the renal function. Then myocardial infarction, as it is affects the coronary circulation and the myocardial perfusion, patient end up with the myocardial infarction. Similarly, heart failure, these are the major complications because of hypertension. Then this is about hypertension and here we discuss what is, what is hypertension and see about the different terminology like what is hypotension what is uh, systolic pressure and diastolic pressure and uh, pulse pressure and we have seen what are the etiological factors, risk factors and types of hypertension and how to manage hypertension. I hope you all understood about uh, this topic and for further classes, otherwise further topics you just follow my videos. Thank you.